Hi guys and welcome to this video. Yuri is here. About a week ago, Facebook released its own alternative to NPM client, a package manager called Yarn. The project instantly became quite popular and at the moment of recording this video there are more than 13,000 stars on GitHub and that's just few days after release. So let's see what's so exciting about Yarn and if it is the right tool for you. Here's the main advantages of Yarn compared to NPM at least according to the official page. It is fast, it is deterministic and it is secure. And as you see, I put a little star here near the secure because I have some concerns about the security that I will explain later in this video. So I have been using Yarn for a couple of days now and I can add a couple more additional good things about Yarn to this list. It can work offline, it is pretty and it supports multiple repositories. And again, there is a little star here that I will explain a little bit later. To keep this video practical, let's start from getting Yarn and installing it on my system. I'll use Brew to get it. Brew install Yarn. If you're not using Mac, there are other ways to install Yarn and there are instructions on the official sites how to do that. One of the ways, by the way, is through NPM registry. So you can pull Yarn as the global dependency and then it will be available on your pass. And done. Let's clear the screen and run Yarn dash dash version to check what's my version and it's 0.16.1. Awesome. Now, the biggest advantage for the most developers will be speed of Yarn compared to NPM. Let's do a quick check and see how much Yarn is faster than its counterpart NPM. So I've got two terminals here sitting side by side. On one side there is NPM and the, on the other side there is Yarn. And I've got exactly the same packet JSON. And this is a packet JSON from one of my actual projects. Thanks for a couple of dependencies like React, like Babel, like Webpack and a couple of development tools. This is a really beefy project in terms of the amount of dependencies. There are roughly 700 modules that you need to pull if you want to initialize that project, right? So what I will do is I will type npm install on the left and yarn install on the right, right? It will not be a super scientific comparison. So I'll just measure the time roughly how much will it take for both to complete the installation. And uh, let's see how it works, right? So npm install, I'll start here and yarn is starting as well. And let's start the stopwatch to see how long will it take. So Yarn is already fetching packages and it's quite fast and NPM it's also fetching packages. I'll pause the video now or I will not pause the video. You know what? Let's just wait for the yarn to finish so that it's real time and you see how long does it take to install 700 packages. And almost there. And here it is building now. So it's 29.4 seconds. And you see, according to NPM's progress bar, it's right now roughly in one quarter of its progress. Now what I will do, I will pause the video and wait for the NPM to finish. And then I will just tell you how much time it took for NPM to complete its task. And it is done. It took one minute and 58 seconds compared to 29 seconds. It is four times more to pull the same packages and initialize the same project with NPM compared to Yarn. And by the way, remember, I mentioned that Yarn is pretty, right? So these little emojis, I really like them in my terminal. So where the speed comes from and why Yarn is faster. As I mentioned before, Yarn is pulling the dependencies from exactly the same server, exactly the same registry as NPM, so there is no network difference or server location involved in the calculations. But it turns out Yarn is planning its downloads and then it's downloading the dependencies in parallel, while NPM is fetching one package after the other. Right. But there is also one more important thing why I really like Yarn. What will happen if I will delete both folders, right? and rerun yarn in my uh, directory, right? Obviously for NPM, it will take exactly the same time because NPM will pull again the same packages and go through all the same process to rebuild the missing uh, node modules folder. For yarn, it will not be the case. So let's remove this. Node modules, oops, RM RF, please. Done, awesome. And let's now rerun yarn install and see how long will it take. 
And you see, this time I've got all the dependencies in my cache, so it's literally it spent no time to download the packages, and, and now it is only 9.37 seconds to complete the whole initialization of the project. This time, Yarn beats NPM by the order of magnitude thanks to the local cache of the dependencies, right? And it doesn't even hit the internet, so if I turn off Wi-Fi and I try to reinstall the same packages, it will just work while it will not work with NPM. And oftentimes, I I found myself in a situation where I'm offline, like I'm in a long flight, and I want to quickly hack around and install a couple of packages. With npm I had to manually copy my dependencies from the other projects, and it was frustrating because I've got those dependencies on my computer, but I cannot install them because my package manager was going to internet, and there is no internet on the plane that I'm flying with. These two features are already enough for me as a developer to move to Yarn because I really like the speed and I really like the offline caches, but there are more to Yarn to explore. Now let's talk about the next feature of Yarn, which is guaranteed determinism. What does it mean for a package manager to be deterministic and why it is a problem for NPM to be non-deterministic package manager? Firstly, the word itself means that for the same input, your program will produce exactly the same output, no matter when you run it or how many times you run this program. And for NPM, the output will be the structure of node modules folder that it is producing for your project. So the problem with determinism and NPM boils down to the way that NPM is storing the versions of the packages that you are installing. On the left, I've got an empty project with package JSON that doesn't have any dependencies yet. And what I will do here, I will install and I will save express version 4.0.0. For the sake of argument, let's say that I'm running this command when express 4.0.0 is the latest version of express that has been released. Maybe it was a couple of years ago. So I'm running this command a couple of years ago, right? So what I've got here, I've got express.js installed. And here's the structure of the directories that npm generated for me. Now let's clear the screen and look inside of package JSON, right? So the problem with non determinism of npm boils down to the way that NPM is storing its package revisions. That is the first out of the two problems. This cap means that NPM is allowed to load more recent versions of Express if they do not change the major version, which is version 4. So if the other developer takes exactly the same package JSON, right, I will copy it in the new folder. And now I will run NPM install. And what will happen? NPM will install different set of packages. What it will do, it will install the latest available 4. Point something point something, which will be 4.14.0, right? So exactly the same input, exactly the same package JSON gave you different output for different developers because this guy was installing package JSON at the time when Express wasn't yet updated. The idea behind it is quite noble. By convention, these two versions should not break the existing APIs of the project. So the idea is, if I'm using the same package JSON, I will be getting the updates for free. However, we are living in the cruel world where humans make mistakes. And it is up to a specific package owner to decide how to update the versions. And people are not always following the best practices. They do not always have the best unit test coverage to make sure that the existing APIs are intact and are working exactly the same way as they used to work before. So now you see why exactly it might be a problem. For example, if you have a continuous integration server that will automatically pull the latest versions of the dependencies, you might find yourself in a situation where you have a bug that only reproduces on continuous integration server, but does not reproduce on your local environment. And that's something that you do not want to have. NPM has a way to solve this issue. And this is the command called NPM shrink wrap. So NPM shrink wrap will produce a file called shrink wrap JSON. Let's look inside of this file. NPM shrink wrap JSON that will write down exactly the versions of each and every dependency and dependency of dependency of your project. Now using this file, the other developer will get exactly the same versions of the software as you. 
The only problem with this file in npm is that you need to make sure that this file is always up to date and whenever you're running npm update or whenever you're installing the fresh package, you're also updating npm shrink wrap. And again, since this is something that a human needs to do, there is a space for mistake here. There is one more issue with determinism. NPM will produce slightly different folder structure depending on the order in which you are installing your packages. And if you're interested in details, feel free to peek into the official NPM documentation. They have this case described. I want to stress that this behavior is not really NPM's fault. NPM was originally designed to work this way. If each and every package developer would be careful enough not to break their APIs between patch revisions or minor revisions, versions, NPM strategy will make perfect sense. However, in our imperfect world, Yarn does a better job of keeping your project stable. Now let's rerun exactly the same scenario, but this time using Yarn. I also have here just package JSON with no dependencies yet. So I will run, sorry, not NPM, this time I will run Yarn add, I will add express version 4.0.0, hit enter. And firstly, let's look at package JSON that Yarn will generate. Get package JSON. And you'll see that firstly, Express is marked as the exact version. It doesn't have the cap, right? Secondly, there is one more file that Yarn has generated. It's yarn.log. What is this log file? Let's look inside. This is pretty much the same file as npm shrink wrap. It also stores all the versions of all the dependencies that your project relies on, but it also stores some additional information like SHA1 hashes for each and every package that you have installed. So if I copy those two files into the new folder and I run yarn install, I will get exactly the same dependencies and exactly the same folder structure as the other developer. And this little fact will make my environments significantly more deterministic. The bugs will be easier to track because the bug that will depend on the version update will be reproducible on any computer of any developer and on continuous integration server as well. Now let's move to the next feature. Yarn is calling itself mega secure because it is using checksums to verify the integrity of every installed package. This is the feature that worries me a little bit and here's why. SHA1, an algorithm that both NPM and Yarn are relying on, is not considered to be secure anymore due to technological and scientific progress, which is quite normal. There's even a discussion in GitHub for NPM stating that SHA1 is not a great idea for security. However, when I read a little bit more, I figured out that SHA1 checksums are not used in NPM for security purposes. The main reason for those checksums to be in the files is to check the integrity of the download. And Yarn, to the best of my knowledge, is not adding any additional security levels on top of that integrity check. So I do not see why Yarn should be considered any more secure than NPM. The last feature of Yarn that I want to demonstrate in this video is that Yarn can also work with Bower. Just like that, you drop Bower JSON, you run yarn install and it will fetch the dependencies and start to download the packages. In my list of features, I put the star near this feature because there are a couple of bugs that associated with it. Firstly, you cannot have bore JSON and package JSON at the same time in the folder right now at the moment of recording this video. And also when I tested this feature, it gave me the error with a sample bower JSON that worked nicely with a native bower. But this feature is definitely on a roadmap and I think think in a couple of releases we'll be able to use the same yarn command to download the packages from both sources, which is quite exciting. So we tried Yarn and NPM side by side and it is time to make some conclusions. Firstly, after working with Yarn, I do not really want to return to bare NPM, majorly because of the speed. I also really like the offline caches. Deterministic behavior is a great feature to have. Everything that makes your builds more deterministic and your environments more consistent is a great thing to have. As for security, I didn't see anything that is making Yarn more secure than bare NPM. It's merely checking the integrity of the downloads, but it is not a great guarantee of a security. The support for the other repository formats like Bower is a great thing to have, even though it is not quite yet working, but I'm sure they will fix it in the upcoming releases. And finally, it just looks nice in the terminal. So give it a try, download Yarn and see how that works for you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next videos.